Okay, I've chosen to speak on um, relationship. And the title is Getting Along with One Another. That's in your notes. Know? Okay. Why did I do Okay. Okay, anyway, as we get the computer to start again, it's in your notes. Let us start by reading Psalms 133, which is a psalm on um, unity. Okay? Never mind, we just read. You can refer to your notes. Huh? Read along with me. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Let's start by looking to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, your word says, food would not be the one that sustains us, but it is your word that feeds us, your word that sustains us. So this morning, let us take heed and pay attention to your word so that your word will feed us and help us to Develop, Lord, good relationship with one another, with you, with one another. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, the pictures are not there. Okay, just now when we read that verse, um, that Psalms, verse 1, it says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Now, in another version, message version, it says, How wonderful, how pleasing it is when God's people... Oh, so sorry, I wrote the wrong one. How wonderful and how beautiful when brothers and sisters are getting along. Get along. And then another version, easy to read versions. Oh, how wonderful, how pleasing it is when God's people all come together as one. In the study of Psalms, Psalms 133 is classified under Wisdom Psalms, which means it contains practical advice. And that advice, you can see it. Yes, uh, that's the slide. Okay, you can see it, it from the words that we just read. Thank you, Pastor. God says, advise us through the, His Word to dwell together because it is a beautiful sight. Okay, this is uh, in, do you remember, this is the team that we have, one family, one body in 2015. Okay, the subsequent verses, two and three are actually pictures of unity. Now, I'm showing you something that I prepared for the children. When I started preparing this lesson, uh, this uh, message, I only want to touch on verse one, you know, because I thought, yeah, too much time, like, because I have to, you know, try to interpret the, 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 the verse 2 and verse 3, uh, what's the picture depicting about unity? After third prompting from the Lord, I decided to. Why? Because the Lord reminded me, you have already taught this to the children. That is the CBC. So I thought, oh yeah, in that case, I know it to prepare. So true enough, when I click and draw my file, oh, everything is there. So you have the spiritual happy meal today, this morning. But the lesson, I mean, the, 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 the thing is still... The teaching is still valid for adults. Huh? It's just that I put a bit of, you know, cartoon and a bit of simplif uh, simplification. Okay? So, and a bit of explanation for the children. So, Aaron was Moses' brother. He's the number one most important priest of the Jew. So, a priest is a special servant, huh? set apart for God, a uh, servant of God. So, at the work, start of his work, he will be anointed, which means pour oil on his head. And the oil makes everything smell nice. It's a picture of brothers who are united, not fighting, getting along. It is good. All smell nice. In another version, it, easy to read version, instead of precious oil, it says sweet smelling oil. So when the oil is poured onto the priest, the smell would diffuse. And when you smell something very nice, how would you react? You know, that's how 
you will express yourself. And that is how dwelling together, living in harmony is to the Lord. Another picture, we just read so we won't read again. So Mount Hermon, then this is Zion. So this is the interpretation of reflection of people that I just draw out so I can explain a bit to the children and now I share it with you. So dew is water that forms on the ground or on surface of object uh, outside at night. So it comes up on Mount Hermon, or Hermon, which is the north part of Israel where the Jews live. The dew makes plant grow when there's no water. So Mount Hermon refers to choice dew, good quality dew, a symbol of God's blessing. Okay, now the other word that is there is Zion. What is Zion? Zion is the mountain in Jerusalem where Jews built God's house. Zion is a good place to be. It is where God blesses people. That's why it's a good place. To be united is like to be in Zion where God blesses. So God is pleased when, we peop- when the people live together and He shows His uh, pleasure by blessing the people. And this is a real picture of God's blessing. And this took place in Galangpata when we all work together to serve one another. Now every picture has a story to tell and reflect God's blessing. This is um, a children's day camp, one day camp, not children's day, children's camp in Gelang Pata. Now this year we have a new challenge in Gelang Pata's work because in the past it used to be handled or in charge by Sister Sally, the one that was shown there next to the elderly sister. Not me, uh, the other one. <laughs> okay, on, the, on her left. Now Sister Sally has been there for a while. So later on she announced, I think somewhere before mid of the year or some, somewhere there, she announced that her leg is giving her severe pain. She cannot drive anymore. So it's very difficult for her to go and serve there unless somebody send her there. And we are not able to make that kind of arrangement. So she has to withdraw and we have to take over. So her load, whatever she has been doing, we will just share out to the people, the team that are still there in Galang Pata, especially the children ministry work. There are more of us there. It was fine, you know, we just carry on a bit, a little bit, you know, each person take a bit from her. So fine, we can cope. The challenge came when it was the children's camp, which we run it annually. So we were thinking about it after we done the regular weekly thing. So now we have to think whether do we want to run the camp, the one day camp without her. Because in the past, the cocktail, you know what, she did that, lah, cover everything. She has to take care of the purchasing, the gift, you know, the team, what to teach, lah, and then what games to do. Lah, you know. She would think of all these ideas, all this planning. And we just hope what she gave us. So easy, ma. but now she's no longer there. Somebody has to hope. Who wants to hope? So we all discuss among the teachers. So round table talk. So first person started. I don't think we are ready, oh, because it's new. And then we're just trying to adapt. So everybody start to say, yeah, Lord, try to agree, you know. My turn come. And then I was thinking, my, of all the people, I would be the one most qualified to take over. Because why? To do it. Because I have done this before and I have been in the ministry for so many years in the children ministry work. So for me to do it, it's not going to be hard, but it will take up a lot of my time and I'm not prepared. But since everybody is saying no, 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 so I say, yeah, lah, no need. Lah. <laughs> then you wait, go to the person there, you know the one that stand out in the picture? Chris Nock. Ah, he doesn't uh, understand Mandarin. Ma. So we are all speaking in Mandarin. Reach him. Then the watch interpret for him, Lei Hun. Then he says, we ask him, what do you think? Must let him have a chance to comment. He said, oh, I think we should do it. <laughs> because, and he make, give an explanation, because he says, whatever the camp is, is just an extension of what we have been doing. You just uh, play more games, you eat more meals, then you sing more songs, that's it. Then we think, hmm, yeah. Oh. So, okay, lo, so easy. Ma. So we said, okay, lo. we go and pray about it. We didn't say, okay, we said, pray about it. So pray, pray, pray. So I thought, since he's so enthusiastic, uh, I said, okay, la, by God's grace, 
Let's do it. So we did it. And this is the outcome. What I saw was really, you know, I am so encouraged and was so happy we went ahead with it. The gifts that you see there, these gifts, we asked, we borrowed the idea from CBC because CBC camp was already over. This camp is in Grapata, was in uh, September. So whatever CBC has, I just took the major giver and they pay $2 when they buy about 200 to 300 gifts, you know. $2, no discount. When we buy, we only buy about 50 to 60, 170. Wow, we were so happy. You know, really, God showed his favor. And then the games, you see the games there? I didn't show the thing because, you know, I didn't plan to actually put it up. So I only used one of the pictures on games. Now the games, we normally make our own, you know, save money. Ma. But that uh, day we were blessed by four units of, I don't know what you call it, paddle, you know. It's not on the water one. You know, you just, pep, you just move, 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 and then you go the other side, it's on ground. Eh? So the children will step on it and do some, you know, activity. It's part of the game, you know? it's uh, part of the game station. So it's very fun. And you have to pay money, you want to, you know, use it. We got it free, four units from a center that we were helping out to do uh, moral teaching. Eh? So we were, I was so amazed. Ayo, so good. Then it's very different, very special. And then the food, you see the donut there. This donut, uh, every time I think about the tea timer, I mean even in the past, we make it very simple because we don't want to mobilize too much work, limited manpower and also don't have money. Ma. We cannot charge them too much because these are mainly non-Christian children. So we always give them easy hot dog buns, no sausage, all this thing. Huh? So easy, the children like it. But I always felt sorry for the children. I said, you these are so, you know, you eat it every time. Camp come, we have something special. So on that day, we have no choice, is it? Because, you know, of all the things that I just mentioned to you, the reason. But on that day, I was surprised. They gave, we managed to get these donuts because it was on offer. Offer doesn't mean uh, it's no good. Uh. It's actually very fresh. It was very good. Usually, it's about two plus, two dollar, uh, two ringgit plus. But that day, we got it 70 cents. And that's the price we pay for the hot dog bun. And then it was so different. Wow, the children also, you know, practically swallow everything, lick everything, clean, clean up. We don't want to give any more extra because, you know, you cannot stop them. They will keep asking for more because the teacher also want to eat. Ma. <laughs> so it was, looks is, re is really good. So I was very happy. And then the other thing is the lesson. I was in charge of the lesson, the teaching material. And I wanted to do a skit. Now, this is done in Mandarin. Eh? I'm not conversant in Mandarin. You know, it's very difficult, not fluent. So I have to memorize, you know, and then, you know, I have to do the skit, tell the, be the director, be the, you know, script writer, everything lah, for this drama eh? on Paul and Silas in jail. And I wanted to practice with the children, uh, with the teenagers, a group of them, five, six of them. And we already planned, we done one round, not happy with it, with it you know. And then we planned to do another one the week before the camp. But lo and behold, something popped up when I wanted to go for the, you know, Saturday, that, that their weekly uh, ministry, because I have to go for a week service in KL. A family, a relative passed away, so I have to go. So I couldn't have a chance to practice. But by divine intervention, something, another death, took place in Gelang Pata. And this time, a team of brothers and sisters are going there. And that was on Friday. The camp is on Saturday, the next day. And I normally don't, you know, know what's happening on Friday at Gelang Pata because the activity only starts on Saturday. But somehow, I managed to get the information. Somebody just tell me that the team, the young people were there going to decorate the hall in Gelang Pata on Friday. And the timing is exactly the time I will be there. They will be there 2 o'clock, I will be there around 2 o'clock. Oh, so we made arrangements quickly. So I agreed to go over, but I'm not going for the week there, but I'm going to the centre. And we managed to go a few rounds of rehearsal. And I just thank God. If we have not done the rehearsal, I think the children will not be blessed by the teaching because it's very much on the skit, you know. It will be very uh, interesting, more interesting and more impactful to the children. So looking back, I just feel that, you know, the Lord's blessing is, is really there when we unite together. And the number of children, initially we were praying, at first 15, pray some more, 25, not enough. 
finally on the actual day, 50 signed up, but 49 came. Only one did not turn up. So I really praise God. Everything, you just see that the Lord's favor is there. His blessing all reflected in this picture. Okay, why is it important to get along? Relationships are central to God's kingdom. God wants us to love Him, wants us to love men, that's people. He wants us to love the church, which is one another, you and me. So you look at Matthew 22, 36 to 40, an expert in the law come and ask Jesus this question. So let's read these words together. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. The next one, Jesus is speaking to his disciple in this verse, John 13, 34. Let's read it. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Okay. God, our God is a relational God. And love draws us to God. Love draws us to one another. And Christianity is a very unique religion. It's this religion that we can have a relationship with God. Other religions, you think back, can they have a relationship with God? Because our God wants to fellowship with us. He's a relational. He's relational. So that's why it's important. Relationships are important in God's kingdom. Next is, getting along is the strength to overcome our enemy. The enemy wants to divide and conquer. God wants us to unite and be victorious. In this verse, it says, anyone you forgive, I also forgive. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of, Jesus, of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Basically, the context is that forgive the person who has done wrong. You must forgive to restore the relationship. If there's unforgiveness, that means there's crack in the relationship. And where there is crack, there is a loophole for the enemy to come and attack us. Okay, we're going to look at a video. This video is, again, from the children. As I was preparing, somehow all this kiddie stuff just come. Never mind, the message is still the same. I mean, the, the point is still there. Okay, but it's fun. Okay, our real enemy uh, is not as cute as the one uh, that the animals has. Uh, our real enemy is really like a lion, waiting to devour us, waiting to see the crack in our relationship and then attack us. So is Satan. Okay, the next one is good relationship make, make life more enjoyable and are more productive. We all can attest to that in the family environment, in the workplace. That's why they always call what? Monday blues, especially if you don't get along, uh, you don't want to go. So Mother Teresa said this, you can do what I cannot do. I can do what you cannot do. But together, we can do great things. It means if you get along, you can work together and you can do great things. This person, he's a motivational public speaker. He says this, your ability to get along well with others will determine your happiness and success as much as any other factors. Do we want happiness? Yes. Do we want to be successful? Yes. Then we have to learn to get along. We want to get along. Okay. This is a company that I used to work in, the story that I'm going to share with you. Now, this company is very unique. It is not a multinational company. This is a company in Singapore. When I was working in Singapore, my first job, I was with a multinational company. They have very good benefits. You know, I really was blessed in that company. So when I later on quit that job and then come um, look for another job, there was this opening. 
in this another company. He's not, uh, it's not like, you know, my previous one. It's a local company. Uh, at that stage, uh, then later on, you went regionalized. So the, account, the finance department or accounts department, I was doing accounts then, uh, I don't have a good reputation because the turnover staff is very high. There was a lot of backlog and the boss was not happy. The auditors have a lot of comment, you know, on all the weaknesses in the system. And because it's not a good conducive environment then, so people come and go, come and go. No Singapore, they have many opportunities. Uh, so if they feel no good, straight away they'll go to another place, you know. So there's all this vacuum, all this, you know, vacancy. So when I went in there, as a, at first I went in because I wanted to, you know, kill time while waiting for a permanent job. I said, okay, I just help up. Because I know a, a person working there, she was my roommate. She said, come and help us. La. Then you waste time for what? I said, oh yeah, okay. Lo. So I went to help. When I first went there, there was this new financial controller that was new there. Now, I like her a lot because she was a very humble person. She's very well qualified, very experienced. And she was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, she was this um, under scholarship Chinese lady. Eh? So that means that she's quite outstanding. Eh? But her attitude was very good. When she was there, she really made get along with a lot of people because of her personality with various departments. And then because there is a vacancy there, she keeps asking me, you want to join us? You want to join us? Are you, actually, I don't like the company because to me, it's like, you, you know, Chinaman company. Bit like, you know, not so excited. But I like her. I like her very much because it's the way she talks to you, she talks to other people, all level, from the pantry auntie to the boss, you know, it's the same. Because I sit next, outside her, her, her office, it's outside her room. So I saw the way she, you know, treated people. So I, I liked her. So I said, okay, la, I joined. And we have a wonderful time there. I had a wonderful time there because, because she set the pace uh, and the environment and people oriented, you know, we just learned to get along. We enjoy each other's company. Yes, we work late, but we work late happily. And she compensated us, promoted give us promotion, give us increment, give us bonuses, give us exposure in a lot of, you know, in the opportunities within that company. Out of that team of finance people, there are about maybe seven or eight of us, right, just in finance, three of us came out to take up the overseas posting. I went to Papua New Guinea, another went to Hong Kong, another one went to Thailand, and we did well there, okay? We, the rest was exposed in marketing, operations, you know, other aspect of the business. But I only want to stay in admin. Oh, sorry, finance. Because I'm a die-hard accountant. I know how to count. I say, take one salary, why do so much? Just do one enough. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it was wrong. La. More exposure. <laughs> so anyway, I just stick to accounts. But I excel there under that kind of environment. That's why. If the relationship are good, there is productivity, there is joy, there is happiness. Okay, next. Even though we know the reason uh, why it's important, uh, and then we, even if we are Christians, uh, we also find it difficult to get along. Yes, ideally, but in reality, what is it? What is it like? There are still conflicts, not only in church, but also our Christian family, our own siblings, our parents, our children, the spouses. And there's this Irish, old Irish rhyme that goes, to dwell above with saints we love, that will be grace and glory. Now, to live below with saints we know, that is another story. How true it is. So why is it not easy to get along? What is the thing in common between ice cream and people? Ice cream. See? Any guesses? Sure, you all know. Huh? You all like ice cream? I like ice cream. Yeah, people, is it? Wow. So that is, the clue is there. Yeah, ice cream. Like people, huh? like ice cream people come in different flavors. And that caused the friction or different, uh, the reason why we cannot get along. Because there is diversity. Even within our congregation, you look across, uh, you actually see so many differences. There is the young one, the old one, male, female, the rich one, not, the, not so rich. Then diverse background. 
ethnicity, the different races, nationality, and everyone, all of us have views on practically any issues. In fact, yesterday there was a brother that came to me. He actually came from, he says his family was from Papua New Guinea. <laughs> you, you won't have that. This is so diverse. And then another reason is believers are still being led by the sinful nature. Yes, this verse tells us, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men, like people of the world? Even though you know Jesus, even though you have the Holy Spirit, you are still being led by the sinful nature. We still do the things that is not, um, is not uh, pleasing to God. It's feeding the sinful nature. When I was in Papua New Guinea, this is many, many years ago, about 20 years ago, I think. Yeah, maybe over 20 years ago. I was posted there as a branch accountant. And in that company, there were other aspects as well. Then we also have the local staff. Okay? And then with all these differences, there's actually a premise for conflict. So when I went there, initially we started well. Uh, I get along, especially this aspect, who is a Christian. A, he is a charismatic background, whereas I came from the traditional church. He is male, I'm female. He's married, I'm single. He has been there more than me, um, longer than me, about five, six years. I was just new there. And other than that is the way we brought up. He was, I think, an engineer by profession. You know, all these differences come in. And the initial stage was okay. Until later, there was a lot of friction. I practically fight with him. Uh, many, many times over all sorts of issues. And looking back, of course, there's a lot of prejudice on my side. And we will fight after the staff went off. Uh, then we will have a shouting session. He will start first or I will start first. Call each other names. After he finished, I also call. Point at each other. The reason why we can fight so much is we know each other's secret. Some of them are dark. So when you fight, you call up all the dark secret. <gasps> wow, make you so angry. I still don't know he knows. <laughs> I still call something that he didn't know. Ayo. <laughs> but this went on. But this amazing thing is about this brother. You see all this sinful nature? You see all the differences? Why we all fight so much? This brother, he always tried to make up. Me, no. I am still angry. He will express it in such a way that he really demonstrated that, you know, he wants to, he's struggling to get along with me. But I was the one that was very difficult. Sometimes when we fight, after we shout, then he left, then he'll come back. Before, you know, uh, we go off, uh, then he would take that piece of paper and just crumple it, you know, he just crumple it. And then I'm sorry. Like, what happened be like this piece of paper? He crumple it and then throw it in the bus dustbin. Let's start again. Then he'll come and hug me. Wow! I was so angry. How can I slap you? already didn't say sorry. How can? But of course, I also slap him. Uh. So anyway, I was not happy. The one stage... I mean, the fights, these fights go on for, for months, for years. I think it was three years there, you know. But of course, it's not always fight. There are times, because fighting is very tiring, correct? <laughs> ah, yo. And after that, you've got no mood to work. And then you think about it, cannot sleep well. Oh, I'm so angry with him. That's why it says, no, not productive. You want to be productive, you have to have good relationship. So, so tired. So, we all cease fire. Okay, don't fight. Stop for a while. After that, cold war. Don't want to talk to him. Angry with him. And then in this cold war season, he used to pick me up because at the time I did not drive. Huh? I didn't drive for a long time, so I decided better not drive. So he would come and pick me up with the, with the company's car. And because of this cold war, I said, I don't want to see him. Lah. So I asked him, you ask the boys to come and pick me up, the local staff. Huh? They are Melanesian. Just now the brother came and told me, because I was struggling with how to call the local people. Then he says, Melanesian. Oh, Thank you. So, I said, I said, you can't pick me up. Now, this brother that I has conflict with, he's handsome, huh? very handsome. <laughs> Tall, well built, married, la, I told you already. La. <laughs> but now, I'm still handsome, you know. So, you know, better company. I mean, you, you're sure inclined to, you know, click, I mean, or, or be, you want to be with those that's. Nice looking. The 
local uh, that I asked him to, you know, arrange to pick me up, uh, they are not handsome. <laughs> Actually, uh, I tell you, the brother that came yesterday uh, and approached me, uh, he's handsome more. Uh. <laughs> I'm, I apologize when I said, don't be offended if I say anything uh, not nice about Papua and New Guinea yesterday, uh, yesterday night. So, but the one that I'm talking about, uh, the staff are uh, not handsome. Not only not handsome, don't smell good. <laughs> Ay, uh, because it's their culture. They don't bathe often. When, when they do bathe, they wear back the same clothes, you know. So you can imagine the sting there. So when it, they come and pick me up, you can imagine how terrible you know, it is uh, to don't want to be with one who smells good and looks good, and rather to put up with this that don't smell good, don't look so good. And I will hold my breath while in the car because it's not far, about 10, 15 minutes. Oh. You know, then only get out. That was how the situation was. But the Lord wants to deal with this situation. I will tell you more in the next part how the Lord works in my life, work in this situation. But you can see uh, why we have all this tension. Okay, the differences, the nature, the, the sinful nature. Okay, I won't go through this. This is just for fun. Okay, these words are, you know, to me, I thought, what is this? I never seen these words before. Only one or two I know. It's words that describe people who are not easy to get along. Okay? I want to talk about, have fun earlier on. Uh, if we have time, but I don't think we have time. Okay, how to get along? Cultivate the qualities of the new man in Christ. Okay, I want to look at Colossians 3, 12 to 15. I took the ERV version because they have this title that I think just flow in with what I want to say. Your new life with each other, you know, getting along. This is what qualities that we want to cultivate in order to get along well with one another. Let's read this together. God has chosen you and made you His holy people. He loves you, so your new life should be like this. Show mercy to others, be kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you, forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. Together with these things, the most important part of your new life is to love each other. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. Let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. It is for the peace that you were chosen to be together in one body and always be thankful. So there's a lot of verses there, but I'm not going to go through it, you know. But I just want to probably list down all the qualities that is mentioned there. And this is not exhausted, uh, this list. Uh. Many other passages tell us how to relate with one another. Just want to draw your attention on this, your new life. Your new life is because when we become a Christian, when we, have Jesus, uh, when we receive Jesus into our life, we are a new man, become a new man in Christ. And Christ is in us. And because we are in Christ, Christ is in us, Christ, Jesus will work in our life and help us to cultivate these qualities. And with these qualities, we can get along, relate with people better. When I was looking at this passage, I tell the Lord, I you so many things. Oh. I cannot talk about everything. So this picture of these children came to my mind. So you know children, how they are like? No, they can fight one moment after that, they get along. Then they will fight again, then they still make up. So easy. So I felt that sometimes we can learn from these children how to make up. Don't get angry and then remain angry, but forgive. And that is a nice picture. There was one morning I was teaching the children Bible class and there were these two boys, uh, seven years old, fighting, not fighting, this uh, other boy uh, hit the friend. At the corner of my eyes, I saw. But these children are actually very good children, but only that day I noticed that they were restless. They were, yeah, usually they are very playful and active, but they are not physical, they are not violent, they are not, you know, fighting type of children. But that morning, because 
probably restless. So this boy go and, you know, hit the friend. And the friend blurted, Teacher, he beat me. So I saw that. Huh? So, ah, yeah, because I want to settle this quickly. So I told the boy that beat his friend. Oh, you want to fight, is it? Okay, come, you fight with me. Lah. You know what's this? You want? I give you one. I got two. So the children laugh a bit. So mellow down. So I told him, no fighting. Ah. Don't beat your friend. Don't hit your friend. Go and say sorry to your friend. So he said sorry to his friend. And his friend replied immediately, it's okay. Lah. So gracious. No, even I said, ayo. And with a smile, okay? With a smile. It's like, ayo. And it was a very nice picture. So I thanked him. I said, thank you ah, for being so gracious, so quick to forgive your friend. So they went on to you know, continue with the class. And I also encountered other situations when I see that, you know, the Lord show me or tell me that I must help the children to deal with young, even children, uh, to make up when they fight. You know? It's not just the adult side is important, must make up. Even children, I see that the Lord want them to get along. There was one time, this is 11 years old, I think 10 or 11 years old, two boys, they fight. Uh. I was busy preparing the lesson and my back was facing them. I was just drawing something on the whiteboard. Then I heard some commotion. The children say, teacher, teacher. They say, hey, keep quiet. Uh. You better read the Bible verse. After that, you're going to play a game, but you need to read the verse. So quiet a bit. After that, teacher, teacher, got blood. Oh, you got blood. You see, my class very bloody. Ah, <laughs> yo. So I turned, cannot continue. Ma. So I went, what happened? Are you sure got blood oozing from the nose? Are you, what happened? What happened? He threw the bottle at him. Take the bottle. Hey, the bottle is empty. But how come there? So I thought, you know, maybe sensitive or what? Eh? So anyway, the other boy, teacher, this one, point the one who threw the bottle. Very defiant, you know? Sit like that. He started first. Are you. Never mind, settle the boy first with the, bleed, with the bleeding problem. So send him to the toilet with a friend, help, who volunteered to go with him, then clean him up. Then he came back. Then I told the two of them. So bleeding stopped, uh, so I told the two of them. You two, because I want to start, carry on the class. Ma. You two, you stay back. I want to talk to your parents. I have to explain uh, what happened in CBC. You're supposed to love one another. Why you want to kill each other? You stay back, huh? Okay. So I continue my lesson. Dismiss them, go back to the seat. As I was turning to prepare, carry on, the Lord spoke. He says, teach the children how to make up after they fight. Wow. Oh, yeah. This is a teachable moment. Not only for the boys who fight, but also for the rest of the children. So I told the children, okay, looks like we have a new lesson today. Come out, two of you. We're going to learn together how to make up after we fight. So I asked the children, the boy, told the two boys who fight, I said, when you fight, Jesus is very sad because Jesus wants you to love each other. But now you're fight. You're going to tell sorry to Jesus. Sorry, Jesus. No problem. Sorry, Jesus. No problem. Okay, now you, the one who threw the bottle, you tell sorry to your friend. Sorry! <laughs> Don't say sorry like that. Say sorry nicely, sincerely. Call your friend's name, tell him why you are sorry. So and so, sorry for throwing the bottle at you. Okay, now the one, the other boy. Okay, now your friend says sorry already. What do you say? Say what? I don't know. Are you still angry? I don't know. Do you still want to be angry? I don't know. I all don't know. Don't know? Okay. Teacher will teach you. Okay? So I turn to the children, the other children. Children, do you come to church, to CBC, to make friends or make enemies? What the children say? Very good, of course, we come here to make friends. Children, is it better to have more friends or more enemies? More friends, yes, of course, the more friends, the merrier. Because we can learn together, we can play together, we can eat together, and yes, of course, sometimes we fight. But when we fight, we learn to say sorry, learn to forgive. Then we become friends again. No? So I told him, now 
you choose to forgive your friend. Tell your friend you forgive him. I forgive you. Say nicely, call your friend's name. So he do it, you know, properly. Then after that, I say, okay, very good. You say sorry, you say I forgive you. So now friends again, you shake hands. So shake hands. Then the rest of the children clap. Either clap or cheer, I can't remember. Then they went back to their seats. I thought it was over, but it was not. So in the midst of the lesson, I have to go to the back of the class to do something. Then after that, I was handling, you know, a while there. Then after that, I turned. I saw the two boys at one corner of the classroom, talking, talking, talking. Then suddenly, they shook hands and then smiled at each other. I was thinking, what is going on? Now, I actually never figured out what happened, you know, why they do that again. So yesterday night, these thoughts came to my mind. I suspected, because I went to ask the boy, because one boy remained, the one that was bleeding, one that was hurt, one, uh, he remained later on in the class. So I asked him, why you all were shaking hands just now? Then he just smiled. But didn't tell me why. This is my suspicion. Uh. I believe because he started it, he provoked it, then he said sorry to his friend. That was what I suspected. Or it could be this now, I make them do it. Now they are ready, they want to say sorry from their heart. But most likely it's the first one. The other boy actually came and said sorry to him because he started it. And that was very beautiful to me. And I pray that we all can be like children in this area. When we fight, when we disagree, when we have conflict, let us make up quickly. Let us say sorry. Let us forgive one another. Okay, the other thing is how to get along. Okay, beside the qualities, the Lord, uh, beside all the qualities that we want to cultivate, to be led by the Holy Spirit who is our helper. So this verse tells us, so I tell you, live the way the Spirit leads you. Then you will not do the evil things your sinful self wants. So don't, just now the other one is that why we are still quarreling, disagreeing, because we are led by the sinful nature. But now you want to get along, you are led, led, be led by the Holy Spirit who is our helper. The other words tell us who the Holy Spirit is, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. So that reminded us, we need to read God's word. Huh? Otherwise, how do we know what God says? And when we forget, the Holy Spirit can remind us, can tell us. The Holy Spirit is a person and he has many roles. He is our teacher, he is our comforter, he is our guide, he is our counsellor. And he is with us 247 all the time. So when you have all these problems or friction or challenges or need, he will just come and help us. We can relate with him because he's a person. The more we connect with him, the more sensitive we are to his leading. And this is an ongoing process. It's not, you know, all instantly or quick, but every time, all the while. I mean, continuous. Part two of the story that I told you, the friction that I have my colleague in Papua New Guinea. Now, because we have or rather, I was so busy fighting with him uh, that I believe the Lord tried to speak to me, but I cannot hear because I just want to, you know, give in to my sinful nature. The opportunity came. The Lord has his timing. The Lord has his ways to deal with us. This week, that week, he was, he has to go back to, uh, he has to go to Singapore, our headquarters, for a meeting. Before he left, actually, it was quite bad. I actually say something or did something that hurt him because he turned away from my room, walked walk out after what I said and what I did with tears in his eyes. I seldom see men cry and I've never made men cry but he's the first one. <laughs> and this was very, you know, to me, huh? I know, you know, it was just, he actually come and actually want, no, it's not that we always fight, but there are times that we actually can talk, okay? And then we fight again over other issues. So it's like ongoing kind of thing. So that particular day, I just said something that was, you know, very hurtful. So he, and he's quite a sensitive man. Huh? I mean, not sensitive, like every time you talk, that he angry. No, like, you know, these kind of things, huh? it hurts him. So when he left like that, you know, 
to Singapore. Now, while he was away, something happened in Papua New Guinea. There was writing. There was uh, political instability. Writing started in Morsby, which is the capital of PNG. They were burning the, 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 the factory there, the aspect factory, I think, from Australia away. And then all this chaos, you know, it was very, and then the news would show it, and it was very frightening. I was very frightened that I know it's a matter of time you come to lay, you know. Oh, you. So he was not around at that time. So that particular, particular day, and I was debating, should I close the office or should I carry on? So, but other people were open, uh, you know, it's in, uh, uh, open up their shop, uh, their, their, their businesses. So I said, okay, I'll just carry on. Uh, if anything, I just close and then run. Uh. So I was monitoring the situation, asked the sales boys to go out, you know, go and look at the situation. So those days, no handphone, just the radio, uh, hand radio. So when I was talking to this uh, staff, uh, I can hear the background, the shots, you know, pop, 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 pop. I panic, you know. Then he says, it's okay, it's okay. They're just dispersing the crowd. They said, no, you come back. I said, no, come back. Because I want to think whether we need to close the shop, you know, the, I mean the, the company and then go off. So I go out of a lot from my office. Uh, it's like, you know, you go out there and try to see what's happening. And my office is just near to the marketplace and also the bus stop. So a few times, the third time or so, I saw this group of children running for their life, you know, young children. A group of them, big group, you know, with terror in their eyes because they're going to go to the bus stop, trying to get out, you know, of that place uh, where uh, they are from because probably they sense there is no danger. So the terror so frightened me. So I so quickly go to the office, go in, want to make a call to try to find out, what, is there any update? What's happening? What's happening? Those days, no, you know, what's up, all this thing. Nah. Before I can even pick up the call, the staff, my staff, came from different directions, three, four of them, running with fear in their, you know, in their face. Miss Anna, Miss Anna, let us go home. Otherwise, the bus, the transport will stop and then we will be stranded. Oh, I realized, oh yeah, what if the staff got stranded and then they're stranded? There are few girls now, so I was very fearful of their safety. I said, okay, pack up, pack up, let's go. Because the company uh, is all glass, you see, so we have to, you know, cover it with blocks or, or, or plywood or whatever so that it won't be, you know, they won't throw stones, you know, sometimes it's very, very chaos, all this writing. So I said, okay. Then after that, you know, like, in this kind of situation, one minute is like one hour, you cannot wait. <laughs> I mean, so I go out and look again, see if really terrible, then uh, you just chabot, la, no need bother about the company, la, correct? <laughs> it's life and death matter, ma. you still want to, oh, what is this? Okay, so I went out, and lo and behold, the company, I went up to the door and saw what? Saw the company's Pajero. My colleague was back from Singapore. And he, probably he saw my face. La. He came out from the car, put his car key in his pocket. I can still remember this moment. Give me a smile. I was so relieved. I saw him call his name. And then he opened up his arms wide. So I walked right into his arms, just like, you know, the glove is meant for the hand. Feeling secure in his arms, the Lord spoke. The Lord says, this is your brother. He is not your enemy. Stop fighting with him. In that moment, you cannot deny, you cannot disagree with the Lord. In fact, I want to say, he's my beloved brother. Came at the right time, correct? Then after that, you see, when we were fighting, I have a lot of things that I think about him that I didn't think was good. No? Probably I think that he should be better. He should do this, do that. So there was all these things in my mind. But that day, I saw a lot of things that was very outstanding in him. First, he told me, okay, now, Anna, I take over. Wow, what a relief. And then that time, by then, I was already driving. Huh? So he said, you go back now, tell the boys, you all escort Miss Anna. Wow. At first, I was thinking, you know, how am I going to go back? I was so well scared on the road alone, correct? But now, he know what to do. Without me asking, I, I just blow, blow. Oh, okay, 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 thank you. Then after that, you take her car after she reached home and send the staff back. Oh, yes, fantastic. The staff, they won't be stranded. And then after that, he turned to me. Don't try to leave PNG now. The airport, there's mass confusion. You will be stranded there. Okay, whatever happened, I cannot take care of you because I've got my family 
that we are staying in different place, you follow pastor. Because I was staying with this missionary family. He will take care of you. And then I remember, oh yeah, I still got pastor. At first your mind is just blank. You're just thinking, no, what are you going to do? You know? But thank God, he just reminded me, tell me. Like he just made things clear to me. So after all this was over, I had to re-evaluate how I see him with all this prejudice brought down and was able to appreciate him. Yes, we still fight, but less. And later on, looking back, I realized even those things that I thought worth fighting is not worth, it does not, it's not worth, it's not worthwhile at all. It, but it's all about spiritual maturity. As I mature, I realize why the Lord says stop. Because the Lord is also dealing with him separately. Just that it's not my part to come and want him to be changed. Because the Lord knows better, knows further. In all this situation, you see the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. That's why the relationship with the Holy Spirit is very important. But we learn even from our mistakes there. So later on, when I came back to church to serve full time, I have another situation with this sister. And this sister made a comment that I felt very upset. He says, she says something like this to other, another person that came back to my ears. She said, hey, she called, she said, you are not helpful. I was very upset with her because I said, why? That's not a fair statement. I don't remember she asked me for help and I said no. Then I complained to the Lord, you know, oh, you look at this person, you know? how come you say this about me? So murmur, murmur a lot. Then when I keep quiet, silent myself, the Lord spoke. The Holy Spirit uh, says, the reason why she said you are not helpful is because you have not helped her enough. Go and help her some more. So I know it's the Holy Spirit. You know, you are so angry, so unfair. Think this and that. Suddenly, these words came, you know. Sometimes it's perspective. Yeah, she didn't ask me for help. Then, of course, I won't help her. Lah. So how can she say I'm no, not helpful? But on her perspective, maybe she's thinking, you should come and help without me asking. Then you will be helpful. You know, so that's how she sees it. That's why she said, hey, you and I never help one. Because I never come and offer my help. Ah, yo, so... With all these things that I try to, you know, maybe, okay, like the Lord could be right. So you're still very reluctant. But the Lord works in your heart, continue to help you to, be, to do the right thing, to rebuild this relationship. So after this, what, he, what the Lord says, I went to the office one day, and then my colleague told me, this is the call. But didn't tell me to call back and didn't tell why. So I said, ah, yeah. Maybe I should call back and find out. She said I'm not helpful. Maybe this time she need help. Okay, I call her to, to help. So I call her. On the phone, she poked me again. Say something not so nice. I uh, poke again. I want to reconcile with her. I want to you know, settle with her. I'm going to poke you one more time. <laughs> so I poke her back. But I didn't poke her to make her angry or hurt her. I poke her to make her laugh. Not only she laugh, I also laugh. Ah, we all laugh. You know, the tension is over. And then we are still in fellowship. Then there was one day, we were just laughing. Years later, like, two or three years later, as we were talking, we were just laughing and laughing. And then suddenly I remember Ayo, how I was angry with her and how the Lord, you know, come and how the Lord speak to me and then help me to reconcile with her. And she was a blessing. She was a blessing. So I thank God for that. And we also have issues in the, and I was thinking of how to tell, how to share more or explain more about being led by the Holy Spirit. I just think of maybe just give a bit of my own, what I've gone through, what I've seen or what I saw, how God works in other people's lives to share that. Now sometimes in relationship, especially with husband and wife, I hear this often from the sisters now. They have challenges in their marriage. To such a stage, I think they become numb to, you know, to their husbands and what, and it's like just struggling. And sometimes they will just compare. How terrible is your husband compared to mine? Wow, are yours more jala? <laughs> you know, I hear this kind of thing. Ayo, so I feel, but they laugh, you know, and that it's like I need to go on. And there was this couple where they already decided they want to go separate ways. These are Christians, uh, they want to go separate ways. And the wife already agreed. Family also supported. 
And now this man, finally he said, okay, let me look at the Bible and see what is the Lord's stand on divorce. And lo and behold, he found this in Malachi. And this is what God says. I hate divorce. And the words just jump out. And the Holy Spirit convicted him. The Lord don't want you to divorce your wife. You forgive, you work through that relationship. And not only he did not divorce the wife, they did not go for divorce, they went on to have another child. They are still working out their relationship. I know there are many challenges in our life, relationship. Even children, parents, yeah. And I want to give one more point that it is the grace of God that sustains us in our struggle with the people that sometimes you know, make life very difficult for us. Especially your family, your children. You cannot cut off you know, from them. But the Lord will sustain you. And I want to share this verse from Paul. Because we can learn from what Paul goes through. Eh? Paul says eh, he, how Paul relied on God's grace. He was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment him. Three times he asked the Lord to take it away. Pleaded, his word is pleaded, tolong, tolong, no? please take this away. He's a great apostle. Eh? And we, have, we are not sure what is this thorn in the flesh. Some people thought maybe it's all the nightmares that he had because he was persecuting, uh, persecuting uh, the Christians. Then now he become a Christian. Eh? You know, that co- probably tormented him. Or it could be the religious leaders, Pharisees that constantly go against him, you know. Wow, always opposing him. Tearing down what he established. You know, ayo, this is the one. We really do not know. But maybe this is the one. And he pleaded. And what did the Lord say? He says, we all know this verse, correct? My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. It is when we are weak, God's power can work through us. And I really like this verse because I experienced God's grace in a very difficult time in a relationship that was broken. It is not about time. Sometimes we say time will heal. Yes, it could be for people who don't know God. For us who know God, it is the grace of God. Because out of it, we can become victorious in this situation. Just like the song that we just sang, uh, Victor's Crown. I wept when I sing that song because I was reminded the grace of God. He has overcome. He wore the Victor's Crown. And because He has overcome, He can give us, His grace is there to help us to sustain and restore the broken, the broken relationship. So we want to rely on God's grace. It is not our own strength. It is really the grace of God. And I want to end with a happy or positive note. By rewriting the old Irish rhyme, but with a new twist. Let's read this together to encourage ourselves, to tell ourselves, to dwell above with saints we love, that will be grace and glory. To live below with saints we can, love deep, deep and say sorry. Okay, in our relationship, if you cannot remember much about what I say, just take back three sentences with three words each. Learn how to say, I'm sorry. Learn how to say, Oh, sorry, start with, learn how to say, I love you. Express it to people around you. Show it to them. And then say, I'm sorry. And I forgive you. That will heal that relationship. And we can love again. Lord, let there be love abound in our midst, Lord. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that we need each other, Lord. Let your love continue to bind us together. Let us reflect, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit come and reveal to us, Lord, areas in our life that's hindering that relationship from growing. Lord, speak to us and give us a heart that's soft, that willing and yielded to you, that you can continue to do, do this work of changing us, molding us to be in the likeness of Christ, that we will be a blessing to one another, that we love 
our brothers and sisters. We love our family members, and we are willing to work at that relationship. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is always with us, Lord. That the Holy Spirit is our helper. Move in our midst, Lord. Move in our hearts. Do this work of healing caused by friction in our relationship, restoring that we experience Your grace, Lord, to help us sustain the relationship, rebuild the relationship, restore the relationship that is broken. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.